Good morning, folks. We've got space weather and space science in focus today. Hopefully observers have caught up on most of the background videos because they will double the usefulness of today's top stories. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun revealed the full size of the southern coronal hole. The south is definitively more active than the north here to start the cycle, which by the way likely means another double peaked cycle as we watch a plasma filament dance on the limb. The top space weather story of the day actually occurred earlier this morning. Slight variability only in the plasma stream kinetics, but in blue, a fiangle flip has tossed the BZ negative up top in red, driving a geomagnetic storm at the moment without a CME or coronal hole stream impact. It is minor and at low levels, but it's critical to remember when we see these isolated heliospheric current sheet impacts, they can pack a punch all their own when they hit every seven to 10 days. And that's our first double for informed observers. Since the galactic magnetic fields and mid-plane current sheet follow the exact same rules as they do here in the solar system, and on longer time scales, pack the same electromagnetic storm of a punch to the sun. We're covering up the sun here with Soho Lasco C3. Lot of questions about what we're seeing besides the small CMEs, well that's Venus on the left, Mercury on the right. The camera is super sensitive, which is why you have to cover up the sun, but that super sensitivity puts those glare wings on the planets as they come into view. It's those lines out to the sides of oversaturation. You can head over to any planetary geometry tracker. You're going to see Venus and Mercury in those positions today. Quick little eye candy as the 2020 fire visualization is out. Now that we have fire color and detection on the latest weather watching satellites, these data sets are pretty darn complete. Everything larger than your July 4th barbecue, they probably got it. We're off to what is the top story in the rest of the science world today, a super collaboration on M87. Now, in addition to my usual plea for you to find the Sky Scholar YouTube channel videos debunking the black hole image today, I want you to focus on how just because something isn't there in one wavelength doesn't mean you won't see something there in another wavelength. This should have been most obvious as they worked the radio scopes in closer and closer. And by the way, if you scoped the Earth from the north with the right radio range, the planet wouldn't show much, but the Van Allen Donut Taurus around it would be singing like crazy. Best bet is the next generation zooms on X-ray and gamma scopes. Something active galactic nuclei are much better for in terms of science is this. Folks, this is not the first or the second time we've seen their study of supermassive galactic cores debunk a form of dark matter. It is also not the first time we've seen them describe their failure to find anything as a successful narrowing of the search. Not even the first time this week. But let's go to our top story today, and it should reshape astrophysics and cosmology timelines. Positive stellar feedback triggered star formation in psychotically rapid rates, as in, after 150,000 years of interacting gases and plasma and dust, new stars are furiously forming. That's way faster than anyone thought possible. But beyond that, RCW 120 has long been believed to be the outer shell cocoon of a stellar event, but their latest characterization of the event, accompanying their truly wonderful stellar feedback conclusion, is slightly off. The problem is that they are trying to describe the bubble as being from stellar winds, just like our sun's solar wind. But the problem is, we can now see that deep inside the nebula, the same new footage that revealed the star formation shows us the astrosphere inside, red. That's the normal stellar wind impacting surroundings. And the larger shell is indeed what I called it, a nebula of a nova-like stellar event. And what do you know? There is indeed a star left inside to do it again what stars do. It's a nod to both yesterday's show and the larger disaster cycle on Earth. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, try one of the movies or playlists you haven't seen yet. Just click our name here on YouTube to go to the Suspicious Observers channel homepage. You'll find it all there. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.